In the last 100 years, world events have changed our land. But we've remained the same. With one purpose. One mission. It's one small step for man. One hope. Holy Trinity celebrates 100 years of bringing Catholic education to Chicago. We can celebrate because of God's grace, because of the doors He has opened to us. We have survived because of the dedication and the commitment of the Brothers of Holy Cross and all who have served. The mission and the vision of the Brothers of Holy Cross, as that has been lived out at Holy Trinity High School, comes from the writings of our founder, Bless Basil Moreau. Uh, and that vision is simply to educate first the heart and then the mind of the students who come to us. Uh, this is consistently what is done in all Holy Cross institutions and schools throughout the world and has been especially pertinent here at Holy Trinity High School. In 1910, Holy Trinity High School began as the passion of Reverend Casimir Stutzko. Tuition that first year was $40, a modest sum intended to make a quality education possible for even the lowest income Chicago families. It was to be an all-boys school serving the Polish community. They attended classes in an old printing plant on Noble Street. On the first day of class, there were 25 students. In the 1920s, Brother Theophilus Makalinski began an aggressive drive for a new building. In 1927, Auxiliary Bishop of Chicago, the Most Reverend Edward F. Hoban, set the cornerstone, commencing construction on the new building September 18th. At the time, Cardinal George Mundelein proclaimed that Holy Trinity is a courageous attempt to give the advantages of a high school education to the children of the working man, a statement that still rings true today. Brother Theophilus accomplished quite a bit during his tenure as principal. He not only raised the significant funds needed to build the new building, but he brought a renewed sense of vision to the extracurriculars, and he had to deal with the consequences and the crisis of the next decade. Student enrollment fell during the Great Depression uh, because a private education suddenly became a luxury that most could not afford. Athletic programs began to also weaken because these same students had to go home and work after school and could not spend the time in practice. In response to the Great Depression, supporters of the school created the Founders Association to raise funds for families in need and to help cover the tuition gap. Another example of how Holy Trinity would continue to make an excellent education affordable to those who wish to excel. As a nation, we stepped up and did everything we could to help in the war effort. And like all other American secondary schools, Holy Trinity was called upon to prepare their graduates for service to their country. Under the leadership of Brother Stanislaus Rusolowski, additional classes were added in mathematics, aeronautics, chemistry, physics, radio, Physical fitness and first aid. At the peak of the U.S. involvement in the war, the student body fell to 334 students. But at the conclusion of the war, the students once again came back to school. The enrollment crested at about 550. Now with such an enthusiastic student body, it was clear that better times were on the horizon. By the end of the decade, Holy Trinity's football team had its most successful season in history, and the marching band began to receive acclaim throughout Chicago as one of the premier high school bands in the city. By 1954, enrollment reached an astounding 700 students. By the 1950s, Holy Trinity High School had already endured three buildings, two world wars, and the Great Depression. By the end of the decade, all of the pioneering brothers who helped create Holy Trinity had passed on. Now, new blood was walking the halls, forging ahead to carry on the mission of the brothers before them. It was now a new era. Global demands in education were on the horizon, and in order to compete with the rest of the world, we needed to change with the times. There was more to education than just the books. Sitting in the classroom, listening to lectures, there were also extracurricular activities which in some way opened up the heart as well as the mind of the students. It provided an opportunity to let the whole person come forth, to, uh, to energize the, the spirit of the students and the faculty.